everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve, and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now, if you've been here before, you know that we mix up our genres here at Black Sheep Props. We've done ancient, um, we've done sci-fi, we've done video game, we're going to be doing movie, TV, maybe even some animation, fantasy, uh, all over the place. And uh, in this episode, we're going ancient, baby. That's right. Love the ancient. So, without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo hoo 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 hoo! Yeah, baby, that's right. The medieval crossbow. Man, dig that monster. Wow, that is cool. Um, this thing rocks, and it's easy, just like everything we build, it's easy. But we've got our cool wood body, we've got metal details on the sides, we've got the metal hooks at the top, we've got the metal bow piece, the metal front end, we've got this cool wooden wedge shape on both sides that the metal bracket is bent around, we've got the metal locking clips right in here, got the metal handle, got the trigger on the bottom, uh, and we've got the cool bow, or the cord on the bow that's got the twine tied on the end of it. This thing is crazy. Man, pop that big arrowhead through someone's arm and watch them get it out. Ha! <laughs> we'll have to push it out the other side because that baby's not coming out um, unless you want to pull out a chunk of your arm. But that's how we roll here at Black Sheep Props. Um, so, in this episode, making an EVA foam medieval crossbow, part one. We're going to begin uh, going step by step through how to make this baby. Uh, and don't forget, our storefront is open, so all the templates for all of our builds are in the store. If you want to pick up a template for the crossbow, you can, and you can build along with us. Um, if not, you want to just chill, that's cool too. Um, all right, enough of me yapping. I sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. Uh, so. If you're ready to hit it, let's make something. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to build the body of our crossbow. And we're gonna need it to be about, oh, an inch and three quarters thick, approximately. Uh, we could buy a two inch piece of foam and use that, but I don't have any two inch right now, so I'm taking two pieces of one inch thick and I'm going to contact cement them together so that I have a two inch thick piece. And I transferred the template for our body piece over. So we're going to contact cement these two together and we're gonna use that for our main piece of the body. Okay, both have been contact cemented. Give it five minutes. All right, time for contact. Very simple. We're gonna line up our edge and we're just going to lay it down. All right, there we go. Now we've got a two inch thick piece for our body. Since we have a bandsaw off to the side, we're going to take this baby and we're going to rip it out on the bandsaw. There we go. Okay, now we've drawn our line for our tapered cut along the top part of the body. We did the side part. Now we're going to do the taper cut on the top part. Okay, so there's the body of our crossbow. Check that out. Nice. So you saw how we did that. We did our curved cut. We did our slight curved top cut. And then we fed it through the bandsaw so that we could do the taper from thick down to thin. This is exactly the same technique we used for the back end, actually the front end, of the Fortnite pickaxe. 
Now we're going to come in with our sanding sticks. We're going to start with the 80 and we're going to take off a lot of these marks from the bandsaw, which is really easy to do. Just come in, just like that, getting it totally smooth, taking all the bandsaw marks off. There we go, nice and smooth. Now we're going to do this side. Look at that, very nice. Now we're going to come in with our 220. We're going to smooth it out a little bit. Woo, is that smooth. One more hit with the 320. All right, now as you can tell, this is a disaster of a mess everywhere. Between the bandsaw and the sanding sticks, crazy messy. So, time out. We're going to take 10, we're going to clean this shop up, open the garage door, get everything out of here, get ourselves nice and orderly, bam, and then get back to it. Okay, now we're going to Dremel the edges of our body piece. Dust mask on. All right, that is nice. Super nice, smooth, round corners on everything. So once again, we're gonna take a couple minutes, we're gonna get all this mess out of here, and we're gonna move on. Okay, now, once again, after we sand or dremel, we heat seal to tighten it up. All right, there we go, tightened up. Nice, we got off almost all of the bandsaw marks. Now, we could have taken some extra steps. We could have built this in layers and we could have embedded a brass tube in here to get it really stiff, but it's not that bad. I mean, if we really wanted to bend it, we could, but when you're holding it, it's okay and it's light. It'll be nice and light and uh, really probably no need for the support on the inside if you're just carrying it through a con or something like that. Okay, now what we're going to do for our two wedges is we drew our side dimension on the side of our piece of foam. So we've got our side cut we're going to make on the bandsaw, this tapered cut. Then when we're done with the tapered cut, then we're going to transfer our top view of the pattern over and do the tapered cut this way. Same thing we did on the back end of the Fortnite pickaxe. Just like that, got a nice bevel cut. Follow your Sharpie line. All right, now there's both of our wedge pieces. Okay, now we transferred our template over to this side. So we're gonna come through with a really sharp X-Acto blade. There's our little wedge that's gonna go on the side of our crossbow. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. All right, there's our two wedges, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna come in with our Dremel and we're gonna round off the top edges of our wedge. All right, there we go, slightly rounded edges, not too intense. Now, as we always do, we heat seal to tighten up our foam. All right, there we go. We've got our wedges cut, tapered this way, and tapered that way, rounded edges, and heat sealed. All right, now we took our template, which is right here, and we struck a line 
exactly where the front of our wedge is going to go and then we transferred those measurements over to here so now we know exactly where our wedge is going to go on our crossbow. Perfect. And we transferred them to the other side as well for that wedge. Okay, so we trace the where we're going to contact cement for the left side and where we're going to contact cement for the right side. Turn this over. We can't let the other side touch the table because it's got contact cement on it, so we'll keep it lifted up. All right, we have all four sides contact cemented. Give it five minutes and then bam, contact. Very simple. We're just going to line it up. Make sure that we're lined up all the way down our edge like so. There we go. We're going to do the same thing with the left hand side. We're going to line it up. Just like That is super cool. We've got our wedges on the side of our crossbow, just like that. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, we transferred our template over to foam for our... I don't know what it is. It's some kind of a bracket piece. Let's just go with that. It's a bracket piece. And we can use the X-Acto because this is a thin foam. This is probably, mm, I'd say, a four millimeter or so. But it's up to you. Remember, we always talk about this. You can use whatever thicknesses you like. You might want to go with a two millimeter, a little thinner. You might want to go a little thicker, depending on how thick you want the piece of metal to look. And we're going to keep the knife up so we can pivot around the corner. Just like that. Beautiful. Now we'll do the other piece. All right, there's both of our brackets cut out. Get the dust mask on, we'll get the Dremel out, we'll soften up the edges around the outside just a little bit. After we Dremel or sand, we heat seal. Foam is tightened up, edges are round, bottom is tightened up for gluing, perfect. Okay, we're going to use some super glue for these pieces. Put some super glue down on the front, like that, smooth it out. Now we're going to come in and we're going to, going to hold it down so that it bonds. All right, there we go. The front end's bonded. Now we're going to fold it over and glue those sides as well. So we're going to come in. We're going to get some super glue down here on these bases, just like that. Holding it down while it bonds. All right, there we go. Now we've got this bonded and the front end bonded. Just like that, we're going to so we don't want to stretch it because it's thin foam. You could stretch it and it won't end up the exact shape you wanted it. So we held it down, it bonded. We wiped off some of our squeeze out. Make sure you've got total coverage. Everything is bonded. Very nice. Look at that. All right. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Dig that. Bent metal on both sides. Right on, man. That is cool. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here at the very end of our handle and it has to look like it's been wrapped with a piece of metal, but the metal is very flush to the top edge of the wood. So instead of wrapping a piece around it, we're gonna use, bam, that's right, the wood burner. 
and we're going to burn a groove all the way around our handle so that once we paint it, it looks like it's a piece of metal that's very flush with the wood. So this is very easy. We've got our wood burner scorching hot. We're going to come in with our metal edge and we're going to go right through like that. Just like that. Go to this side, straight through. Now notice we're leaving the corners alone right now and I'll show you why. Very cool. So we wood burned on all four sides, but we didn't touch the corner. And then at the end, we were very careful and we went in and we connected all four corners. Sweet, sweet, awesome. Look at that. Yeah. All right, now we transferred our side detail piece. It's going to be a metal plate on both sides of the crossbow. So we transferred it over to thin foam. It's probably two millimeter. And we're just going to use the X-Acto knife because it's so thin. A lot of corners, so we're going to be standing the knife up so we can pivot. Look at that. Wow, that's detailed right there. And you saw how easy it was. As long as you're standing the knife straight up, you can pivot around any tight corner. Now we'll do it again. All right, there we go. There's both of them cut. Okay, we drew our guidelines so we know where both of these two pieces will start. And then they'll wrap around the shoulder right here. Now we go just over the edge so that the, our little metal strip has a, some contact cement to grab onto. We're filling in that middle area just a little bit because we want to make sure we get total contact on everything. There's both our pieces contact cemented. Give it five minutes. All right, here we go. We're going to line it up on the top edge just like that. Make sure our contact cement gets anchored. Just like that. Now completely cemented. Contact has been made. We're just going to roll it around the shoulder like that. So we get nice contact on the whole shoulder. Then we're not going to stretch it. We don't want to stretch. We're going to just lay it down. We're going to lay it down and follow our marks just like that. And there we go. Look at that. Perfect. Now we're going to push down, get contact everywhere. Perfect, look at that. Now it's got the little lip that goes around the shoulder right here. And that's gonna happen on this side also. It's going to start right there. Roll over our shoulder like that. We're going to, now we can come in and get everything pushed down. There's the two metal plates on both sides of the crossbow and they wrap up over the shoulder right here. Now we've got Golly, check that out. That is sweet. We got the metal bent over the wooden wedge there. We've got the metal plates on the side that wrap around the top of the shoulders right there. We've got the wood burned line on the back so it looks like a metal cap when we paint it. That is sweet. All right, that was it, super cool. We knocked out the whole body. We put on the wood wedges on the sides. We did our metal bracket, so it looks like it's bent over the wood wedges. We did our two metal plates on each side, real scrolly stuff there, but with the X-Acto knife, you saw how easy that was. And uh, we also used the wood burner to detail the little metal cap on the end. Super cool and super easy. Uh, now in our next video, making an EVA foam medieval crossbow part two, we're going to wrap up the whole build. It's all going to come together like a glove and it's going to be sweet, sweet, awesome. Uh, like they always are because it's super cool EVA foam rocks. Um, so that's it. Uh, that concludes making an EVA foam medieval crossbow part one. Uh, hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend and 
subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Hope you liked it. See you next time.